I think this inflation and also the velocity are two metrics which are very important to elaborate on a little bit more, Desiree, because it's not necessarily that it triggers the right kind of association with somebody that is not that familiar and a lot of our viewers might not be in the crypto space uh, or just sniffing into it. The inflation you were saying, if I get it right, is how many more Bitcoins are entering into the market, so the supply, is that right? Correct. Okay. And the velocity then, once it's in the market, on the other hand, means how quickly is it changing between the owners? So the market movement themselves or, uh, yeah, perhaps the, 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 the trading volume, if I may say it that way. So it's comparable to cash. If I have 10 francs in cash, it takes a while for me to give it to you, to hand it over to you. And with tokens, this is going so much faster because with the blockchain, we have such fast, cheap uh, transactions that velocity is getting so much faster compared to, tra to the traditional world. And does velocity mean higher demand, i.e. then an increase, potential increase in the price of the coin? It can come from higher demand, but uh, as I just explained with Bitcoin, if people just keep their positions, they don't want to give it away. I mean, higher demand then just creates higher prices. This has a lot to do with elasticity as well. Mm -hmm. But this is already quite specific and these are more the supply side dynamics. And from the demand side, we actually uh, simulate an S-curve adoption as is very common with new technologies. There is a slow adoption at the beginning, then there is exponential growth and then a flattening of the curve. So that's how we try to look at demand and supply dynamics. 